हेलो एस्पिरेंट्स वेलकम बैक अगेन टू द थर्ड क्लास ऑफ डेली डोज दैट इज एटीन ऑफ ऑगस्ट टूडे वी विल बी टेकिंग अप द इम्पोर्टेंट स्नेपेट्स सो एवरी डे यू विल बी गेनिंग समथिंग न्यू फ्रॉम वट एवर डेली डोज न्यूज विच वी आर टेकिंग सो आई रिकमेंड यू ऑल टू प्लीज गो थ्रू दीज वीडियोज इन अ फास्ट फॉरवर्ड मोड ऑल्सो यू कैन गो थ्रू इट बिकॉज इट्स जस्ट हार्डली फिफ्टीन मिनट्स थिंग but you are going to get lot of data once this whole month ends up right right like we had started from i think 16th of august from so so from 16th onwards to 16th september you will be getting a full dose of data full dose of new information something new which you can add up in your uh, mains answer writing very much uh, thorough insights through the prelims questionnaire which upsc tends to ask because uh, since we have given this exam we are much experienced we know what kind of questions and what psychology upsc tends to uh, keep once it makes the questions right on the basis of that we have started this initiative so i want you all to just go through this at least for one month so that you can analyze how important it is it is for you all what kind of support system you are getting over here from this right and before that again i want you to remind that uh, uh i want you all to get reminded of that a streak form a uh, streak daily initiative form the description is given in the the link is given in the description you have to go through it fill the form where you can get free upsc materials especially related to uh, very good articles from uh, famous magazines like frontline news net etc you will be getting a proper time table for every day mains and prelims related questionnaires and as well as csat compilation so all these things you are getting free of cost i want you all to just please go through that uh, description uh, through that uh, link in the description and fill the form starting with today's news the first in news is uh, data a uh, uh, very uh, important and crucial data because uh, now whatever climate change scenario what we are looking forward or what we are going through is very much visible with this data list if you go through so this was given in hindu today the that days are getting hotter day by day and july 2021 was considered as one of the hottest days since last since the last 141 years so they have collected a data of 141 years and on the basis of that simulation of data they provided that july 2021 so as the years are passing by we are getting that earlier when the data came it was 2017 or 18 as the hottest year then 19 as the hottest year now 20 and now 2021 right so day by day our temperatures are increasing and the days are becoming hotter day by day so that's what it is given in this that the the momentary uh, thing or this this is not a momentary thing this climate change uh, scenario is becoming serious day by day right so from this data you can see recently an ipcc report it had issued a strong warning against an impending climate crisis uh, attributing rising wildfires heat waves extreme rainfall and floods to human activity which is related to anthropogenic activities which are taking place and it had advised to cut the carbon dioxide emissions as fast as possible in the absence of it if you go through this chart if no climate change policy would have been in place so surface temperature would have been increased by 4.1 to 4.8 degree centigrade by 2100 compared to the pre industrial levels at the present scenario with what rate we are cutting down the emissions or with climate change policy in picture what is there is that the global surface temperature is estimated to increase by 2.7 to 3.3 degree centigrade so at the present level of emissions jo bhi hamara abhi ka filhal policy chal raha hai and whatever emissions emission rates are being uh, upheld at uh, as of now on that basis there there is certainty that the temperature will increase and it, the increment will be approximately 2.7 to 3.1 degree centigrade and if we pledge to follow the paris climate deal paris climate change deal and if all the countries adhere to the clauses adhere to the uh, emission reductions which they have made adhere to the promises which they have made then the global emissions will be able we will be able to cut the global emissions by an uh, and and the temperature estimate is going to be increased by 2.4 degree centigrade so this is the level of emission targeting which we have to do 
कि प्रेजेंट लेवल पे इतना एमिशन टारगेट करने पे भी वी आर टेन टू इंक्रीजिंग वी आर इन द इंक्रीजिंग ट्रेंड ओनली ठीक है पैरिस क्लाइमेट के पूरा एधेयर करने के बावजूद 2.4 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टेम्परेचर का राइज होगा एंड इन समाचार मंथन लेक्चर्स इन एनवायरमेंट यू वुड हैव गॉन इफ यू वुड हैव गॉन थ्रू वहां पे दीज थिंग्स हैव बीन डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल कि अगर सी अगर टेम्परेचर इज इंक्रीजिंग जस्ट बाय वन परसेंट देन हाउ दिस ग्लेशियर मेल्ट इज एग्रोवेटिंग द सिचुएशन सी लेवल राइज इज बिकमिंग अ प्रोमिनेंट प्रॉब्लम स्पेशली इन द कोस्टल एरियाज एंड लो लाइंग एरियाज सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर गेटिंग इंटर कनेक्टेड एंड We have to take certain crucial steps, right? उसके बाद फिर ये सारे डेटा दिए हैं सो आई वॉन्ट यू ऑल टू जस्ट गो थ्रू दीज थिंग्स सो दैट यू कैन हैव अ चार्ट इन योर माइंड और अगर मेन्स में आता है कुछ ऐसा क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू क्लाइमेट चेंज सिनारियो या आपके ऐसे में आता है तो यू कैन यूज दीज चार्ट दीज आर वेरी फंडामेंटल थिंग्स विच विल प्रोवाइड यू इनोवेशन और बहुत ही ऑथेंटिक सोर्स रहता है ये सब किसी भी डेटा को कोट करने का राइट यू कैन यूज द बार चार्ट यू कैन यूज द टाइग्राम्स You can use these uh, uh, these kind of uh, mappings and all. So, ये सारी चीजों के लिए I'm providing you this list. So, just make a rough picture, rough diagrammatic representation of this whole data thing, so that you can utilize it in your essay as well as in your uh, mains answer writing paper, right? And even uh, nowadays, uh, UPSC is following a trend of uh, this thing, going through the trend analysis. ठीक है, सो दे आर फॉलोइंग दिस ट्रेंड एनालिसिस थिंग राइट फ्रॉम 2016-17 वहां से ये ट्रेंड वाला क्वेश्चन शुरू हो गया इनका ठीक है इकोनॉमी में टेंड टू आस्क की फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स इन लास्ट टेन इयर्स द जीडीपी टू डेट रेशियो हैज इंक्रीज ओनली कंटिन्यूसली राइट सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स ट्रेंड एनालिसिस एक आपके माइंड में होनी चाहिए ठीक है नेक्स्ट इज एक्सपोर्टर्स टू गेट ड्यूटी रिलीफ एज पार्ट ऑफ जैन वन आर डी टीईपी स्कीम सो दिस स्कीम इज इम्पोर्टेंट एंड इट इज बीन गिवन बाय कॉमर्स मिनिस्ट्री सो यू हैव टू गो थ्रू दिस स्कीम द फीचर्स ऑफ दिस एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पीस ऑफ न्यूज वॉट इज इम्पोर्टेंट इज दैट वॉट दिस आर ओ डी टीईपी इज नाउ डूइंग एंड टू वॉट एक्सटेंट इट इज एक्सपैंडेड इट्स लिमिट्स राइट सो दिस पर्टिकुलरली दिस स्कीम इज रेमिशन ऑफ ड्यूटीज एंड टैक्सेज ऑन एक्सपोर्टेड प्रोडक्ट स्कीम with commerce secretary so it was basically by the ministry of commerce it the scheme it has started from january 1 and it has subsided it has culminated uh, the two ongoing schemes meis and seis so you have to know about meis and seis that is mercantile uh, sir mercantile and services export schemes and that were in violation of wto norms so this particular scheme had come into picture because the earlier two schemes for the promotion of export for providing import free duty for providing uh, tariffs and all that was in violation to the wto norms that's why government came up with this particular uh, program of rod teep that is reduction of remission of duties and taxes on exported products theek hai to inke iske features you should know and You should know that why it had come into picture because the earlier two schemes were in violation to the WTO norms. Now this particular scheme is following is under the under compliance of the WTO provisions. That's why budgetary allocation of twelve thousand, approximately twelve thousand crore, uh, had been allocated to this particular thing. And in this, it will enable zero rating of exports by ensuring domestic taxes that are not exported. Now in this. in such kind of news articles there are some terms which come into picture or upsc wahin se wo term uthata hai and gives us a definition theek hai same things happens with economic survey and budget budget or economic survey mein bhi kuch terminologies hoti hain related to economy that upsc gives us definition of that jaise last in 2016 uh, i think 16 or 17 they gave this question related to uh, merchandise merchandise uh, sorry merchant discount rate not merchandise it was merchant discount rate so they had given this particular uh, question in upsc 2016 uh, preliminary question and why this was in news is because uh, whatever this uh, after demonetization uh, there was certain scenario which occurred and in that merchant discount rate had come into this terminology became popular from that it was there this concept was there but it became popular after the demonetization uh, scenario right so they asked this question of merchandise uh, merchant discount rate so uh, accordingly re related to that i have found one word in this that is fpo or free fob or free on board value 
Now, what is this free on board value? This term is important. So, free on board value, it is nothing but it is a shipment term. Basically, it is related to uh, your exporting facilities provided by any country. So, it is a shipment term used to indicate whether the seller or the buyer amongst these two, who is liable for the goods that are damaged or destroyed during shipping. So, once the exporting activity is happening, once this buying and selling thing has happened, now if the products are getting shipped, then who will be liable for the products that may get damaged during the transportation activity? So, it is, is it the buyer or the seller? So, free on board, this term is being, is, it gives, uh, or it gives the responsibility to the buyer that once the whole transaction has occurred now it's the responsibility of the buyer to take care of the products so if in case of damage or in case of destruction the responsibility or the liability will rely on the buyer and not on the seller okay so it is the shipping point or fob origin it means the buyer is at risk and takes the ownership of goods once the seller ships the product so jab pahunch jayega it will be the buyer who will be liable to all these things and not the seller that is free on board uh, duty, right? So it is the price that buyer pays for the product, excluding any of the following. So these particular things are not included in free on board duty. Rest beyond this, everything will be included. What are those? They, that is the loading cost, insurance cost, freight cost, unloading cost, customs, because that is already provided in the custom tax, VAT, import duty, and transportation from the port to the final destination so excluding these any other charges it comes into picture that will be in free on board duty right next in news is rbi unveils financial inclusion index now in, over here only important thing uh, is that who gives the financial inclusion index so rbi is giving this particular index how much quantity of financial inclusion we have achieved Main's point of view is important to jata hai ki the data it has provided ki kis kis category mein financial inclusion mila hai. What financial inclusion is? Sabse important cheez hai. What is financial inclusion? Is ki definition you should know. Thik hai? So that the linkage paper 3 mein seedha seedha financial inclusion topic GS economy mein. Right? So what is financial inclusion? What is the current status of financial inclusion in India? Why is it advantageous? What are the limitations? Everything will be covered from this and RBI is unveiling the financial inclusion index to get the status of uh, to what extent we have achieved this target of financial inclusion. So you have to find out that this index it has uh, it is it has ended in March 2021 so uske data they have accumulated and whatever result they have provided. Now this will be published in July every year the RBI said in a release the index incorporates Details of banking, that means how many people have already come under the uh, banking provisions or they have proper accounts under their name. Then investments, what kind of investments are being made or how many people are making the investments. Insurance, how many people are get, are, have got covered in this, whether the poor population is getting covered or not. Postal as well as pension sector in consultation with the government and respective sector regulators. So this is how the uh, this these are all the composites or the uh, main uh, uh, features of this financial inclusion index with the where data will be collected from various sources and RBI is unveiling this. Next the news is related to a PIB news that is Ministry of Commerce and Industry has recently provided certain awards uh, which is which is which had been conferred by Shri Piyush Goel National Intellectual Property Awards 2020. Now, in this era of innovation, creativity and everything, IPR or the intellectual property is one of the finest thing or one of the most important thing which is required in our country. Because we have the innovation ka abhi filhal target hai, level hai, uh, where we stand only at around 1.1% of our uh, this thing, GDP. Ka Kharcha jo hai wo sirf innovation. Sirf 1.1% of GDP is related to innovation or it is going on innovation thing. Vahi pe US is around, it's around 14%, Israel may 12 or 13%. So the level of innovation which we need as a diverse country is very, very less. And most of this budgeting or most of this funding is coming from the 
from the government rather than from the private sectors which is also a very it's not a very good picture right the private sector should be encouraged it should be like it has to come into field kyunki wahan pe innovation hoga because there is competition government to in any case provide kare right so that is why it's a very bleak picture in terms of innovation and uh, technologies that's why this intellectual property becomes very important and in the in regard of that uh, we have followed a lot of we have come up with lot of uh, these policies one of them was the national policy on intellectual property which had provided lot of um, easier steps for people to open up new innovations to open up new startups and everything uh they have provided certain policies to encourage more people to come into uh this category of intellectual property they can have easier patent norms evergreening of licensing and all these things have been provided by the indian government so india records 572% growth in grant of patents in the last 7 years which is very uh strong figure right and it is very much needed for our country then 28391 patents they granted in 2020 to 21 as compared to 4227 grants in 2013 and 14 which is a very good picture so to related to this uh, these data has to be there in your mind so that if a question comes related to this you can have a proper database in your uh, notes right now center to impart training and awareness to 10 lakh students on ipr matters in azadi ka amrit mahotsav 14.2 lakh trademark registrations done in 4 years india's ranking in global innovation index jumps to 48th in 2020 plus 33 from 81st in 25 to 2015 to 16 and ip has the power and potential to change lives and create livelihoods for billions so technology and ideas these are the twin engines which is required for the progress of any country and we being in the emerging sector in the emerging arena to become a developed one we need to focus on these two twin en- twin engines engines of growth right powered by intellectual property india can be innovation powerhouse of the world and it is key for success to start up india make in india digital india etc and etc right so you have to go through this next from down to earth second generation bioethanol it is time to launch it head long so already we have found success in the first generation biofuels where we have come up with this renewable technology now ethanol blending is coming up into picture it is getting encouraged uh, day by day and we have we are utilizing that to its full capacity so there is in the second generation i'll tell you about the generations in the second generation reactive pipeline technology it could be a game changer for bioethanol production it can reduce crude oil imports and boostal energy independence this was a news article from down to earth so there is a technology that is reactive pipeline technology where bioethanol production will be encouraged it will be um, increased uh, it will be used for increasing the production of bioethanol so that the blending program can become more successful in the coming years country's target of 20% ethanol blending in petrol by 2025 this was a target so by 2025 we have to go for 20% ethanol blending it will play a key role in reducing crude oil imports so lot of happenings are uh, taking place in india as of now where the crude oil price is gaining strength right there uh, today only in the newspaper there was uh, news that the states are not in uh, they are not in uh, convergence with the central government when central government had asked the states to reduce the cost of the petrol price prices which are becoming pricier day by day right so in sab cheezon ki wajah se this bioethanol blending is gaining lot of importance and it will bolster india's energy independence so we we are not dependent on the import of the crude oils once we become a successful player in this particular field what is ethanol blending so first of all ethanol that is c2h2 uh, c2h5oh ethanol because of alcohol so you might be you might have read it in chemistry so ethanol it is an anhydrous ethyl alcohol it can be produced from sugar cane maize wheat etc having high starch content by the process of fermentation we use it uh, by fermenting and then alcohol is being produced it can be mixed with gasoline to form different blends then as ethanol con- molecule contains oxygen it allows the engine to more completely combust the fuel and once the complete combustion of fuel happens in the engine that means the the polluting gases like sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide these gases will not be emitted from the engine 
Hence, it is known as the greener energy or a renewable energy. So, the complete combustion of the fuel because of the presence of oxygen resulting in fewer emissions, reducing the occurrence of environmental pollution. Ethanol is produced from plants that harness the power of the sun. So, ethanol can be considered as a renewable energy. Now, the basic point over here which I want to make is regarding the generation of biofuels. So, when we talk about biofuels, there are three generations in which the production takes place. The first generation biofuels, they are made from sugar, starch, vegetable oil, animal fats using conventional technologies. So, it does not require a very high-fi technology. It is a fundamental level of production. Hota hai. That is your first generation bioethanol fuels. Examples of first generation are bioalcohols, biodiesel, vegetable oil, bioethers, biogas. These are the first generation biofuels which are formed from these particular ingredients that is sugar, starch, vegetable oil, animal fats, etc. using the conventional technology, right? The second generation fuels, biofuels is produced from non-food crops such as cellulogic uh, biofuels and waste biomass which are from stocks of wheat and corn and wood. Examples include advanced biofuels like biohydrogen and biomethanol. These are the second generation which require a furtherance of the technology or the advancement of the technology utilizes cellulosic uh, these biofuels, right? Then the third generation biofuels, these are produced from microorganisms like algae. So with the help of microorganisms, if we are producing the biofuels, that is the third generation, which are still in the nascent phase because we are experimenting with how the biofuels can be produced from algae. And if such things happen, there should not be any kind of uh, compromise on the food crops because India is a country which requires the food crops at the most. So, there should not be any compromise with the food crops. That's why we are coming up with newer technologies. So, this is how the generation and this whole diagrammatic representation will make it more clear. So, initially there is a biomass which is divided into three generations. The first generation using the corn and potato with the hydrolysis we convert these uh, particular ingredients in the starch and after fermentation we produce the first generation of biofuels that is ethanols. In the second generation we are using wood straw grasses or cellulosic, uh, cellulosic uh, these materials. With the pre-treatment we convert these, these into cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. Then with fermentation all the alcohols will be produced with gasification, syngas and hydrogen again utilized by the industrial, for the industrial production. And in pyrolysis, we produce bio oil, bio oil, pyrogas and char, right? In the third generation, using algae and food waste, with the extraction, we produce triglycerides, fatty acids, lipids and proteins. And with transesterification, we convert these products into final products, that is algal oil, biodiesel and as well as aviation fuel. So, this is how the generation is getting divided. Uh, this was this is it for today's uh, news, newspaper discussion. Again, tomorrow we will meet with some new information. Please try to make notes of these so that you can have a proper database at the end of your season. Right? Thank you, class. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Civil Station.